single thing that's out there. Yo, it's first contact with Joshua Bowen. He's a man on the mic, just in case you didn't know it. Covering news from all around the globe. From the weather in space to UFOs. We'll talk politics and make you open your eyes. Conspiracy theories and government lies. We'll dig it all up and try to find the proof. Cause it's time to demand the truth. It's time. First contact it's time. radio. We it's have time arrived. to demand the truth. First contact the radio, we it's have time. arrived. First it's contact time. radio. It's time to demand the Good morning, Earthlings. How you doing today? Welcome back to First Contact Radio. Hope you had a good weekend. Today is the 9th of June. So right off the bat, we can see that we are at a transition between two moon signs, going between Libra and Scorpio. Libra and Scorpio. We can see that the transition occurred. At 5.38 a.m., so we are now absolutely into the new sign. We have a trine going on later today between Mercury, right here, which is communication, and the moon sign Scorpio, which is transformation, deep transformation. And then again with the moon sign Scorpio and Neptune, which is looking at things from a new perspective. All right, a little more in depth here if you want to check out the ephemeris just to see where everything is at the present time. No major changes except the ones that I just showed you. If you want to look and see where the moon sign is, the moon sign right now went from Libra into Scorpio where it is here. Our sun sign is currently over here at Gemini moving into Cancer. And then you can go through the ephemeris and just place all of the others where they are. And that way you can see how things are going energetically in your world. Numerology for today is number four. Here's how we've arrived at that number. Six plus nine plus two zero one four. That is a 22 altogether. Two plus two is four. That is our numerology for today. Four is the card of the emperor. He who sets in order is the meaning behind this card. Aries is the first sign of the zodiac. Mars is the planet. That's why all the red around here. It is take that red and transition it into something creative as opposed to argumentative, angry, and so on and so forth. Our moon sign here is Scorpio, which is this transformation. Okay, It looks like it might be bad, but it isn't. It just means a transition from one form to the next and of course our sun sign lovers discernment connecting with our higher self via our our subconscious okay so numerology let's take a look and see where everything places itself up on the tree the emperor right here four gemini right here and scorpio down here from beauty, from the heart into beauty, or from victory into beauty, or emotions into beauty. So we come out of emotions into the heart space. There we have our correspondences. Emperor A stands for window. It's Hebrew letter on it. Look at our uh, card of death right here. Moon, fish, Scorpio. And our last sign is Gemini, lovers, Hebrew letter Zayin, meaning a sword. Current moon phase is 85% full. We'll be at a full moon the next two to three days. This week in the sky, tonight the moon is part of a four-sided lineup tonight with Saturn to its left, Aspika and Mars to its right. 
with summer not far off you can still catch procyon very low into the twilight you may need binoculars it's all it's a 17 percent left of jupiter for now how many days you can follow it the first day of a star becomes completely invisible and the afterglow is called a holacial setting okay so you can kind of see where we're at Sun moons up here saturn libra right here the mayan oracle we're at a magnetic tone magnetic tone is the beginning of a new wave spell magnetic tone we attract to us kin for today and the guide are both the same as the wind inspiration like-minded energy is synchronicity or navigation the challenge for today is free will and our hidden power is the storm the phrase for today is I unify in order to communicate attracting breath I seal the input of spirit with the magnetic tone of purpose I am guided by my own power doubled and then today we could see that we are two rows down two columns over which puts us in a synchronicity point so today is a galactic activation portal day okay if we go over to spaceweather.com we could see that our solar wind at the moment is 508.5 kilometers per second it's moving pretty good planetary k index is two to four so we're moving in some sort of an unsettled range nothing these little corona holes here but the big one is kind of smooth itself over m class flare possibilities at 35 x class at 15 geomagnetic storm activity shows 50 percent in the high latitudes 35 cent percent in the mid latitudes so that could account for some very interesting sky watching out there which is the main thing that you get from all of those and the last part for us to look at here is to see what our Jewish calendar is for today today would be 11 Sivan is the name of the day and for a little bit more insight on that the daily thought questions are good and show you you're alive and thinking but you're not going to get all the full picture of Torah by pecking like a pigeon at crumbs on the sidewalk the only way to comprehend the Torah is to say is saying is by a consistent schedule of study and a good teacher all right so that gets us started knowing where we're at what we're dealing with as we go about in the world today stay tuned UFO news is up next This is the UFO News with Joshua Poet. All right, Dirk, thank you very much. First sighting comes to us from La Serena, Chile, May 30th. This is colorful video footage recorded in the night above La Serena. Okay. Two minute fifty second video. And you could certainly see the colors of that. Pretty cool. Alright, that's a pretty cool one. Nice, bright, colorful one. Okay. Okay, now we're going to go over here to uh, air traffic controller tells his UFO experience. Something happened during USAF veteran Gary Flood's Cold War duty in Alaska. And he had thought he had been begging, and it had been bugging the retired military air control radar officer for nearly half a century. As the years passed and turned into decades, he saw and read a lot of bullshit UFO stories, which got him wrestling with his own piece of peculiar data. It was all ancient history, of course, but from the from his home in Birmingham, Michigan, Flood recalls, I figured I've got to make a record and put it out there somewhere because this was a legitimate radar event and I would have been considered a trained witness. So in 2005 the old ATC guy decided to post his first hand account of the UFO evidence at the UFO evidence website where you can get the detailed account today. Scene setter early 1958 January February Edison Ailson Air Force Base outside Fairbanks home to nuclear weapons and the state-of-the-art US surveillance technology just months after the Soviet Union rattled the West with the successful launch of Sputnik 
Sometime in the wee hours at 2 to 3 a.m., Flood was watching the scope when a target popped up and began logging speeds of up to 5,000 miles per hour, sometimes at right angles. NASA wouldn't be able to reach these velocities with an experimental plane until 2004, so when the unmanned X-43A managed to hit Mach 7 before exploding off California after an 11-second run, with an assist from a search radar antenna, he was able to gauge its upper altitude at 55,000 feet and beyond. Flood alerted distant early warning line outposts post as well as ground control approach counterparts at LAD, AFB, all of whom managed to track the bo bogey for up to four hours, but it stayed confined to a relatively narrow area and made no aggressive moves. Ultimately, around daybreak, the T-33 and a helicopter were ordered up for look-see, but the pilots reported only an ice cloud over a L AFB energy plant. Well, I didn't just, well, that just didn't fit. The thing was moving all around, was so high, it was going too fast, that it picked up on multiple radars, says Flood. 76, at the right angle turns it was making, no human could have survived that. All right, so there you have it. An old sighting there. Okay, Scott, one of the hottest UFO spots on planet Earth. Small Scott town with more than 300 UFO sightings. Boney Bridge has become the UFO capital of the world with more than 300 sightings of unidentified flying objects reported above the town every year. It's a small town in the heart of central Scotland, but Boney Bridge has earned its place in the unexplained history books along with Roswell in New Mexico and even the Bermuda Triangle. With more than 300 sightings of unidentified flying objects reported above the town every year, Boney Bridge has become the UFO capital of the world. Consular, Consilior Billy Bachman says so many residents come up to him with concerns about what is happening in the town's skies that he has appealed to three major prime ministers, David Cameron, Tony Blair, and John Major, to order an urgent investigation, and yet no official investigation we know of is underway. The Ministry of Defense says that they are satisfied that there is no evidence that the United Kingdom's airspace might have been compromised by hostile or unauthorized foreign military activity. But mysterious sightings in the area, known as Fer Falkirk Triangle, which branches from Boney Bridge to Stirling and Fife, continue. Everything from spaceships landing to mysterious balls of light have been reported. Some unexplained sightings have even been caught on film. Publicity concerning the sighting started in 92 when businessman James Walker said he noticed some strange lights in the sky while driving home. At first they thought they were stars, but startled when he saw them move and assume a triangle shape. Around that time, the Sloggett family reported one of the most extraordinary sightings from the UFO hotspot. Since then, further UFO sightings from this alleged portal to another dimension have become thick and fast. All right, you can see we have a lot more to the article. So, Boney Bridge, new place or old place or just a place that UFOs are going on there. Police officer and TV reporter had UFO sightings. Oberlin, Ohio, residents in Lorain County and Rocky River and even interstate drivers were puzzled by a strange light in the sky Saturday night. News channels had four separate reports of a UFO, including one from a police officer and one from our own reporter, Paul Kiska, of a strange flying object that circles in the sky. One woman said she was driving near Amherst and pulled over at a rest stop after the light gave her goosebumps. Other drivers were talking about the same light. Okay. Here we have uh, whales in a Facebook app. The paranoid normal investigator has launched a Facebook appeal for witnesses following a suspected UFO sightings over Wales. Gavin Davis made the move after an unidentified cluster of lights was spotted in the night sky over West Wales on Thursday evening. Dale said he was in bed when he saw the fast-moving objects over Haven Ford West. He launched a Facebook app appeal to gather information, photos, and footage from anyone who might have seen the same clusters of lights. The UFO is described as being one larger bright light and two smaller lights around it and was heading east. Gavin told the Camer Carmythian Journal, my immediate suspicion was that it was an international space station, but I checked that it already passed. 
Davies, who turns, runs the Paranormal Chronicles website, told Journal that he had received several responses from people who had spotted the object in the night. It's literally a UFO. I'm not saying it's aliens, but at the same time, we don't know what it is. The post on the Paranormal Chronicles website said reports suggest the object was too bright and large to be a Chinese lantern. No sound could be heard from the object. If you have any information or photographic, please contact the Paranormal Chronicles. And there's a website there, Paranormal Chronicles at AOL.com. And last here we have a documentary for your watching. It's 52 minutes, 54 seconds in length. It's a documentary about sightings from around the world. All right, I'm going to leave that for you so you can check that out. That is our UFO news for today. I'll be back after this song. Come into our circle, great spirit. Fill our souls with peace. One story, and then we're going to get to an interview that I did last week. This story here says, Computer passes Turing test for the first time after convincing users 
it is human. A supercomputer has duped humans into thinking it is a 13-year-old boy becoming the first machine to pass the iconic Turing test. A supercomputer has duped humans into thinking it is a 13-year-old boy to become the first machine to pass the iconic Turing test, experts have said. Five machines were tested at the Royal Society in central London to see if they could fool people into thinking they were humans during text-based conversations. The test was devised in 1950 by a computer science pioneer and Second World War codebreaker, Alan Turing, who said that if a machine was in indistinguishable from a human, then it was thinking. No computer had ever previously passed a Turing test, which requires 30% of human interrogators to be duped during a series of five-minute keyboard conversations, organizers from the University of Reading said. But Eugene Gustin, a computer program developed to stimulate a 13-year boy, managed to convince 33% of the judges that it was human, the university said. Professor Kevin Warwick from the University of Reading said in the field of artificial intelligence there is no more iconic and controversial milestone than the Turing test. It is fitting that such an important landmark has been reached at the Royal Society of London, the home of the British science and the science of great many advances in human understanding over the centuries. This milestone will go down in history as one of the most exciting. The successful machine was created by Russian-born Vladimir Vesilov, who lives in the United States, and Ukrainian Eugene Demenchenko, who lives in Russia. Mr. Vesilov said it's a remarkable achievement for us, and we hope to boost interest in artificial intelligence and chatbots. Professor Warwick said there had been previous claims that the test was passed in similar competitions around the world. The true Turing test does not set the questions of the topics prior to the conversations. We are therefore proud to declare that Alan Turing's test was passed for the first time. Professor Warwick said having a computer with artificial intelligence had implications for society and would serve as a wake-up call to cybercrime. The event on Saturday was poignant as it took place from the 60th anniversary of the death of Dr. Turing, who had laid the foundation of modern computing. During the Second World War, his critical work in Britain's code-breaking center at Bletchley Park helped shorten the conflict and save many thousands of lives. Instead of being hailed as a hero, Dr. Turing was persecuted for his homosexuality after his conviction in 52 for gross indecency with a 19-year-old Manchester man. He was chemically castrated. Two years later, he died from cyanide poisoning in an apartment suicide, though there have been suggestions his death was an accident. All right, very interesting story. So now we have this man's legacy, the test that has been passed by a robot supercomputer dupes humans you know whenever I see that humans have been duped it doesn't really take a supercomputer to do it um, unfortunately people are getting duped all the time but very interesting very interesting so where do you think this technology is going to go we can kind of see where it's going right it seems to be following along with what we have heard and thought about for so long with uh, these television programs and with the robots coming to life and the Terminators. So we'll see. We'll see how it unfolds, but technology definitely exists. All right, I have an interview for today. The guest for today's show is Michelle Walling. I did this interview with her last week and put it all together and bringing it to you today, Michelle. And I had a really good conversation. So without further ado, let me get to it so you can listen to what we talked about. Hode with First Contact Radio. Today, I am here with guest Michelle Walling. You know her because I read a number of articles that she writes from In5D. So here's a little bit about Michelle's background. She's a certified holistic life coach, author, and In5D radio show host of The Cosmic Awakening Show. She's devoted her life to being a bearer and grounder of the light and service to others. As a truth seeker, she is committed to share her experiences with the world. She is also a hands-on healer, a distance healer, an empath, and an intuitive. 
Michelle has recently joined forces with Greg Prescott as an admin for the N5D Facebook page, as an assistant for N5D events, and as a contributing author for N5D.com. Michelle also supports Greg's endeavors in many other areas, including alternative and holistic health care. The next project is a walk-in clinic under the name AHH, Alternative Holistic Healthcare, to be launched sometime 2014 or 15 in Sarasota, Florida area. And then the subsidiaries will be opened around the world based on the model. Michelle Walling's Cosmic Writing website is CosmicStarseeds.com. Holistic counseling sessions can be booked on the website. And hello, Michelle. Well, welcome to First Contact Radio. How are you today? Hi, Josh. I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me on your show for, um, for you know, reciprocating because you were on my show last Thursday on the Cosmic That's Awakening right. show. Yeah. Yes. It was a lot of fun. I, so I thank you very much. That was, that was a really great experience. It was. We, we went for a whole like two and a half hours. I can't believe that. You know, time just flies when you start doing this stuff. But, um, yeah, so you can find that on the Cosmic Awakening show on N5D Radio. And I'm, I'm very proud to be a part of uh, N5D Radio and N5D.com. And there's a – actually, if you go to N5D.com, you can hear our interview. Um, if you look up at the top right-hand side, there's a button that says, N5D Radio, and you just push that button, and you'll get to all the episodes of N5D Radio. Excellent. Makes it easy to get there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, yeah, re reciprocation is always important because, you know, it involves paying it forward. So, you know, when energy comes into our lives, um, in order to keep that energy flow going, um, we, you know, we need to 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 expend some of it and that involves you know when somebody does something for you you do something back and I'm actually writing an article tonight um, called how to create abundance for everyone and it's a ba it's based on the universal law of abundance and so nice. you'll be seeing that on n5d.com but um, what I wanted to come on your show and talk about is the article that I wrote for um, cosmic star seeds and um, it is called all about stargates okay and um, I am just fascinated with stargates and I'm fascinated with anything that has to do with science fiction it's just my favorite thing to watch and um, I don't although I don't watch television much anymore and I don't really go to any movies anymore um, I did go to the last Star Trek movie that came out and Ironically, I think it's it was named Into the Into Darkness or something. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, but it was great. I loved seeing Captain Kirk and Spock with the, the new younger actors and I've always loved Star Trek. Star Trek has always just resonated with me. And, you know, on a side note, so has um Bewitched. When I was growing up, we had um TVs with rabbit ear, you know, antennas. And, right. and we had like, you know, maybe six or seven channels and um, Bewitched and I Dream a Genie. I could just watch, I could, I mean, I could watch those all day. Those are important as Ancient Aliens is today, you know. So don't watch right. much TV, but it, it, uh, one things I do watch are Ancient Aliens. And if if I'm really just wanting to turn my mind off and, and do something on the television, I'll look for a Star Trek's ne next generation. I haven't watched too many of those, but I will watch it just to, just to look at the ships and everything. So I understand. Right. Yeah. I understand whether it was, you know, whether it was Gene Roddenberry or another writer, um, they, they definitely, um, were either downloading that information or, um, I think, um, somebody even said Gene Roddenberry even, um, or the or one of the writers. I'm sorry, I'm not sure who, but they would dream it, like the their guide would would download the information in their head, and they would dream some of it, and then wake up, and then write the script, and just be, I'm talking about the next generation one, um, and write the script, and just be so proud, you know, that they that they came up with that information. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. And it's amazing how many things over the years from Star Trek are becoming realities. Oh, I know. So, you know, it's, uh, I mean, you, when you look around the set of the ship, I mean, it's just fascinating to me. I mean, I would feel perfectly at home in one of those little rooms, 
you know, one of those little rooms with the bed and, you know, the little window where you can look out at the stars and, right. you know, real simple design. And, and like you have the, you know, a food or liquid replicator where you just tell it what you want and, and push a button and, and, you know, you've got whatever you could possibly want there, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and I'm, I'm sure it's all like uh, good for you. I mean, they don't have any GMOs or anything on a spaceship. <laughs> Right. Well, you know, I just read an article the other day on the show about a a 3D printer mm -hmm. that is doing that exact same thing, mm -hmm. except instead of ink, they're putting food in it, and they're starting off with like a nurse, nursing home, and they've got all this food. They say it melts in your mouth, and they just print it out, and, you know, Star Trek. You know, those 3D printers, I've been following um, a guy named Bill Ballard, who went um, to the Peru project uh planet libre in peru and that's i'm just totally fascinated i mean i don't know how they work i mean other than like in atlantis um what we used to do and my son was the first one to teach me um how to do this when i when i landed in my merkaba spaceship in atlantis but um the first thing that uh, he he greeted me and he taught me how to you know, hold out my hand and create a flower out of the background energy. Just manifest it. Just manifest a flower. So manifestation from the background energy is something that we will remember, you know, to do as we move more into a higher vibrational resonance and we are able to, you know, connect more with our higher self. So, <clears throat> excuse me, um, well, you know, may have a lot to do with how to create abundance for everyone now that I think about it and you know, there's always a reason for everything, and I guess that's why we had this show today, so I could, <laughs> so I could expand on that more. But right. yeah, so well, before we go, let, let's um something you just said about Atlantis. Mm -hmm. So, do you have memories of that time? And you know, when you were talking about the Merkava, you know, what is it that you resonate or remember from that time that you've brought forward to this time? Well, I had an Akashic reading done. And the the way that I was brought to the lady, uh, Carolyn Evers, that gave me the Akashic uh, Record reading, was she's able to go back to the Creator's reading, the Creator's Records, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I wrote an, an article called All About the Akashic Records and the Noosphere on N5D.com. And the reason I... Um, you know, had so much information about the Akashic Records is because I've actually worked with this lady in groups and talked to her a lot about the Akashic Records. There And it explains in the article that there's Akashic Records on the creator level, which is, you know, everything. And then each planet has their own records and each person has their own records. Each person's cells have their own records. And they're all kind of interconnected like um, like nestled uh, Russian dolls, you know, within each other. But if you were really to think about it, it'd be more like spheres, like circles. And, you know, because creation is infinite. So um, as, it, as creation comes down into the denser environment like we are now, where, where the, the particles are spaced so close together, um, the records, you know, are going to be on the inside. And then as you expand back out, you know, it's going to be like a circle on the outside. And so she, um, she's very accurate with her readings. Like there was a lot of confirmation done and, uh, and I've, I've just am fascinated by what she was able to bring forth. But the first, it seems the first time I came to, to the earth actually as, um, a person coming down to the earth was in a, in my Merkaba vehicle, which was like an egg shaped. Um, I just, you know, thought where I wanted to go. I don't know where I came from. I'm assuming either a Stargate or a spaceship. Um, and then it had like a little, um, like a little door where I just stepped out of it. So, um, you know, I think the Merkaba has to be activated in order to create, you know, whatever, you would like to create in order to travel in. So, and, and I'll talk a little bit about the Merkaba in the article here, but, but my son in this lifetime uh, greeted me in that lifetime. And so, in other words, I wasn't here uh, for Lemur Lemuria. Um, I did know about Lemuria. Um, the things that 
I just start having um, recollections and feelings of uh, familiarity. And really, it, it began, it, the reading began to really mirror my life here. Um, I was a healer at the Temple Beautiful of Isis. Um, and I had several lifetimes in Atlantis. Atlantis lasted a long time. But one of the things that I used to do was um, use the crystals and sound to heal people in the temple. They would come, uh, you know, maybe every year if they if they were really balanced or, you know, if they really had some energy that was stuck, they would come get a healing. And that's how they could live, to, you know, 400 to 1,000 years and stay in the same, stay the same age. Because their um, their cells, you know, replicated themselves and didn't start dying off after you know after a while. So that's how okay. I, that's how I have these, you know, I can call them fantasies about Atlantis, or you can call them you, you can just own them and and say yes, I came to Atlantis and I did this and I did that. So um, and my my life pretty much mirrors being a healer and. Um, realizing that we're moving towards manifesting from the background energy. You know, I'm a manifester and a, and a supporter. That's really what I do the best. Counseling and um, uh, support, a liaison. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if I found myself on, on several councils in the higher aspect of my being, making decisions and, and helping helping to manifest solutions and moving forward. So that's who I am. Awesome. Now, did you volunteer to come down here? Absolutely. Um, I'm not sure that I realized what the hell I was doing when I said, yeah, I want to come down. But um, I'm, I knew that the um, – what I did know is the, the reward for the spiritual growth and service to others was going to be something that um, was highly desired and um, – I knew that it would be worth it in the end, and I knew I would succeed. I don't think I knew the power of thought manifestation of the negative side. I don't think I understood that. And, of course, that's what we all decided that we would do would be to understand, to truly understand um, polarity and duality. And in order to move forward spiritually, you have to experience it. And that includes, uh, for me... I can't speak for everybody else. However, I would like to put the seed in everyone else's brain. In order to understand the dark, you would have to have lifetimes as a dark being. I mean, that's all there is to it. Um, I, I just listened to an interview from George Kavasilis that uh, just a, if you just search for him and his most recent YouTube, today is uh, June 4th. Um, he, you know, he, it was about, uh, you know, God, he was, it's about God and, and creator and all this. Um, but basically he was saying that in order to, um, this is an experience and in order to, to understand, um, the extreme denseness of polar polarity and duality, um, we would have had to, you know, all of us been, been, uh, had dark lives. Um, the one thing about that though, that I, I have to say is that I wasn't like a dark soul. There's a difference in experiencing the darkness and being mm -hmm. intertwined in it and being a dark soul. A dark soul is one that has basically cut their connection off with creator for energy source. When you have a connection with creator, the energy moves back and forth. It flows through your like connection tube or whatever you want to call it. The spark that's in your heart chakra that's connected in infinitely, whether it be outward up into space, if you want to think about it or inward into your body, whichever way you want to think about that is, is fine. You know, it's all a matter of perception. So I, uh, I didn't have a dark, uh, an actual dark soul, what I did is I went undercover several, several, several times. And one particular lifetime, I had another re Akashic reading by Andrew Bartzis. They're very well resonated with me because I duplicated this same scenario here in this lifetime. But I went undercover to a dark being and I traded um, myself to release some very important galactic uh, leaders that had been captured and I, um, I fell so entranced with the person that I went 
to, um, you know, I was like a, a, like a ham girl in a way, but more of like a companion or a sidekick. And I had, um, I had talents about, you know, talents that could entertain like no other and, um, like dancing and creative expression. I wanted to make sure I clarified that (laughs) what my talents actually were, (laughs) but, um, I, I fell in love with my, uh, with my, um, with the, the dude, I guess, you know, and I had a child and then there was a, then, so that created some karma that I had to rebalance in this lifetime. So it's very interesting when you can get Kashuk readings from reputable people because it, you know, and it was meant for me to do that. And it was a slow process in my awakening and really figuring out who I was and where I've been and understanding my life because we live in cycles. And so, you know, life is just a repetition of where we've been before because it's all happening at the same time. Right. Well, that's awesome. Yeah, I've talked to a number of people that have volunteered and they have the same sentiment, myself included, that we volunteered, but we weren't quite sure what we were getting into. Mm-hmm. And and this isn't the same as everybody. I'm going to talk about groups that are here on Earth, but um, I actually volunteered to come at, um, at a time where there was a chance at a golden age or a chance at a at a majority shift in light. So it, I haven't, I didn't come here. I came here for the experience, but my soul had already moved through one of these experiences before. But it does, it, it was such a challenge that, it, you know, I knew it was going to spiritually advance me. But I really came here to help everybody else move through it because I had already done it before. Right. That's the important part that, you know, so many are here because they have gone through this before. And I think that's what everyone's remembering, remembering mm-hmm. of what we know, how to do this, which is why it's not such a really difficult thing you know, more than it needs to be. Yeah. And not to have so much fear wrapped around, um, certain things that other people say and not to listen to people like me on my experiences and try to tie it into yours. If there's something that resonates, then, you know, take it. And if it doesn't resonate, leave it, but don't take it all together as a package and say, okay, it's gotta be just like what Michelle Walling said, because that's definitely a a huge mistake you can make. And, and when you're trying to figure out, you know, who you are and how to get information and how to actually the best, the best thing that I can suggest is when you get tied into that stream, that flow of, of, of energy, that source energy, then it just seems to, um, to synchronicity, start bringing things to you. You start, they, um, your guides that are here to help you will will drop ideas into your head or you'll be on the, for me, I'll be on the internet and I will just come across one thing, click on it, click on something else, click on something else, and all of a sudden, bam, I'm at an article where exactly the information that I need to either write an article that I was just thinking about or that confirms something that just happened to me or to Greg or to one of my other friends. And it's the confirmation trail. I suppose that is what the universal law is all about is man. I mean, it's very apparent to me. They can give you all the clues. There is unlimited clues. It's up to you to put all the pieces of the puzzle together. Right. Well, look at the synchronicity, you know, between you and I, we literally were writing to each other to invite the other on their show at exactly the same time. It was and I crazy. I, yeah. I, I sent my response or my uh, note to you, and then I got a response back thinking, oh, she answered it. And it's you asking me, and I was like, wow, that's quite synchronistic. It was. And then the day before the show, I believe, no, two days before the show, I'm sitting here, and I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, I need to contact Josh and see how he would like to call in, call or Skype or whatever. And I kid you not, I got right on Facebook and bam, you sent me a message asking me if you wanted, if I wanted you to call in or Skype, if we were still on. And I was like, oh, wow, that is so cool. And the, and I'm not sure if it's a, if it's a mixture between my higher self in the, that is in no time already knows what's about to happen and just drops those things into my head. 
and and also a mixture of that and okay you need to pay attention to this person you know this person is in either your soul group or has something that you need to work with him on so i think it's a little combination of both yeah, I think so. It's fascinating how it works, though, isn't it? It is. I love it. And I try not to um, take it for granted. And I will tell you one more thing, and I want to get into my article. Um, sure. One more thing that happened to me today was fascinating, Josh. I was I pulled into a parking lot at a store, mm-hmm. and I had my foot on the brake, and I have a shifter on my – it's a Hyundai, and I have a shifter on the column, and I – just grabbed the shifter like I do a thousand times and went to put put it up in the park. And the damn thing wouldn't go. It got stuck at, it was in drive and it got put it in neutral and it wouldn't go any further than that. And I had an appointment today to go to. I was just running into a store for a second and I was like, well, I had an appointment at the insurance, uh, insurance claim office actually, um, for some hail damage on my car and, 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 uh, this kind of all ties together. Um, so I was like, what am I going to do? And there was this little, like this little panel, I was, I'm looking at it and something said, look at that panel. And the panel says something like a, it's a, a shift release. Well, I'd recently cleaned my car out, had no tools. I need like a flathead screwdriver to pop this little panel cover off to maybe, and, and, and I possibly needed the screwdriver to shove it in there and release whatever. I'd never had anything like that happen except for a 1969 El Camino that I had one time. The transmission kind of went out and it got stuck in reverse. It was the only way I could drive. And so I'm panicking. And this was a lesson. I'm sitting there thinking to myself, there's a lesson in this. There's a lesson in this. I'm panicking. And so I, I stopped and I went, okay, think. What's the lesson? What's going on? And I simply said, okay, I call out to my guides and angels. I need your help. I have an appointment in 30 minutes and I'm stuck here in a parking lot and my car will not go into park. And, um, you know, I need your help. And I grabbed the thing and pushed it forward and went straight into park. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I was like, Okay, cool. And I just got out of the car, you know, went in the store and, and I stopped and went, oh, oh, thank you very much, by the way, because, <laughs> you know, you don't want to take it for granted. And it just seems like, though, when they when it comes, it's just supposed to happen. Mm-hmm. But I was just that was just weird. So I ended up getting to my appointment on time. And sure enough, um, I had a little bit of hail damage, had a five hundred dollar deductible. And when they deducted the deductible, my check was for seven hundred and seventy-seven dollars and seventy-five cents. Oh. <laughs> so you know, lucky sevens, like when you hit yeah. the 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 jackpot on the slot machine or whatever. And I'm not uh, the hail the hail damage for me. I needed a new um, a new hood, and so I'm not gonna. There was just hood and on the roof, so it was very lucky how it happened. Because right now I'm not going to get it fixed. And um, I needed that money because I actually had already paid it forward to somebody else who ne- who was needing some help. And so, it, you know, it all works out. And that's why I was going to write the article on the law of abundance. Because here I was paying, you know, $500 for somebody else to do something and I get $777 back. So <laughs> it worked out really well. But I'm really excited to talk about my article, and if it's okay, I'd like to read a little bit, and then I may just stop and say something about it. Sure. Well, great. And so it's all about Stargates, and you can find it on CosmicStarseeds.com, and it starts out like this. Some people on planet Earth feel like they are truly home. For those who do not feel like this planet is their home, there is a deep longing to define where home is. Home could be the new Earth, a place in the celestial mansions, or a planet in another galaxy, universe, or cosmos. For those who would like to leave this planet, is it possible? It is possible that we would do so through a Stargate. And you read articles so much better than me, Josh. You know, I'm reading my own stuff, and and I, you know, get you read very well. I just wanted to put that out there. Well, thank you. So, I wanted to talk about the group of humans, planet Earth, at this time. 
there are many of pe people on the planet at this time from other worlds, galaxies, and universes to assist humanity and the planet with the transformation they are going through as a collective consciousness. Only the best of the best was allowed to be here because of the importance of this mission. And as its reverberations will be felt across the universe, there are billions of souls that wanted to be a part of this experience, but there were only so many bodies available. And just like I mentioned before, um, Earth, you know, is an, it's an ascension machine, but it's, it's also a um, meaning it's a spiritual um, upliftment machine to where you can come, you know, once you've been to Earth, once you've been to the densest place, in our universe and been through the experience and freed yourself <clears throat> and freed others, then I mean, I, I think you've, you've pretty much done it all. <laughs> but one thing I wanted to talk about um, when I said that um, home could be another galaxy universe or cosmos is that mm -hmm. <clears throat> we are multidimensional infinite beings and so when you think about it, um, where we are from is infinity, which uh, does exist beyond this cosmos. So I'd like to put a little seed out in everyone's brain today to think about, you know, yes, we've been to the Pleiades or we've been to Sirius or we've been to Orion, which I've been to all of those. And I originated, um, you know, I started in Lyra and, you know, I've been through the Orion Wars and I've had those experiences. I did the. I, I do feel like the latest place I was at would be the Pleiades be, before I came here at the time of Atlantis. But I would like to just make sure that everybody knows not to box themselves in on who they think they are, and to really, as we move higher in consciousness and expand our knowledge, that we expand the fact and the thought about other cosmoses. All right, I'm going to leave it right there because there's a lot more to this interview. The interview was, uh, you know, it was well over an hour, hour and 19 minutes. So the rest available. Um, I wanted to play a big chunk on this show, which you did, and now you've got the best of both worlds, the version on the show, and then the full standalone video as well. I also put a link here for the article. You can see it going back and forth on the screen, but here, if you just want to read it all at once here's the full article here all about stargates all right and that brings us to our message for today our channeled message and this comes to us from hilarion june 9th to 16th 2014 by marlene's wet Lashaw. beloved ones the energetic downloads are intense and powerful and will lead those who are attuned further into their missions and destiny Many there are who are finding the transformation process a difficult one and it is helpful to allow for times of rest and nurturance when feeling overwhelmed. The earth continues to move into a less dense level and this will have a profound effect on all her inhabitants. There will be less stress within the human system and more increased feelings of contentment, joy, and peace. As you hold your light steady you are assisting the greater field to align to the light pouring from the celestial realms. Rest easy within your hearts knowing that however difficult these times feel to you in the present moment, you will emerge victorious. The more of the incoming light that you can assimilate and absorb, the easier it will be for you. The Crystal Kingdom is being reprogrammed to the higher frequencies and this will also have a catalytic impact upon the whole of the Earth and all upon her. Daily attunement to the crystalline grid is essential in order to be receiving the codes that are available to be activated with the DNA RNA of the human body system. Life is unfolding into a higher level of consciousness and humanity is being supported by the universe in unseen ways. Affirming daily your intent to be aligned to and connected with your divine essence will facilitate the process. The I am presence of every human upon the planet is endeavoring to bring in the greater light within each soul. These are the days that require a steadfast vision that will raise the frequency field to a new level and your powerful intent and visualization can accomplish miracles. Believe in your power to create change in a nonviolent and loving way and maintain this vision in your daily existence. You may be feeling the effects of the old systems as they begin to reset and start anew, many of which are bringing vast improvements for all upon the planet. Your patience is required as you meet with pockets of resistance from the old paradigm thinkers and doers. 
By remaining attuned to the greater light, this will feel easier than before. The goddess energy is growing in power and might and a balance between the masculine and feminine within is required to maintain one's graceful transition into greater light. Have faith in the process you are going through and trust that you are being assisted in all that you are experiencing. This will be evident by the synchronistic and affirming validations that take place in your personal process. Listen to the whispers of the angels and watch for signs of the hidden realms, for it is now becoming easier to discern. Interact with delight in the beings that surround you. Observe life opening to new perspectives and a closer connection with all that is. Find the wonder and magic in nature and know that you are an integral part of all that is unfolding. Work your magic, dear ones, and continue to bless everyone and everything that crosses your path. Along with the seeming chaos of the crumbling paradigm that is now taking place, there is much to be grateful for. Focus on this, for it is gratitude that will bring more of what you are grateful for into your daily life. You can and you are, doing it. Until next week. I am Hyla Ryan. Alright, another good message from Hyla Ryan. Again, a reminder of the shifts that we are going through which are truly happening to each and every one of us. All right, that brings us to our meditation for today. Just go ahead and close your eyes. Take a deep breath. And exhale. Take another deep breath. Exhale again. And as you continue to breathe, I want you to feel your breath and how it connects you to life. And I want you to feel all of your energy, how that connects you to life. And realize that this connection to life is existing at all times. There is not a time when we are not connected to life. Though at times we feel disconnected, we realize it is only an illusion. And as we connect into life, we find ourselves moving in synchronicity being inspired by the things that we experience the energies that move through us around us and as we feel this connection we feel the gratitude the gratitude of being part of a bigger picture and so we look at our lives from the perspective of who we are in the big picture and then we step back to look at ourselves from the big picture and see the little place where we reside. And no matter what perspective, we are connected. So we honor that connection by giving thanks to the great Creator who creates all that ever was, is, and forevermore will be. Contemplate the words of this affirmation. I forgive those who have harmed me in my past and peacefully detach from them. So imagine yourself just letting go and forgiving those who may have harmed you in any way. And as you do, you feel lighter. You realize it is a burden you no longer need to carry, so you let it go. And as you let it go, you find yourself happier as you move through life for you're no longer burdened by the things that are weighing you down and so you imagine yourself going through life unburdened and for any time you may feel that there is something there you find the problem you forgive it you forgive the person and you keep moving keep expressing gratitude and thankfulness So as you go through the world today, just simply think of love. Sending out love into the world and thankfulness for the ability to do so. And between the love and the gratitude, just observe how your day goes. 
So let's let our subconscious mind continue on that journey and let's bring our conscious mind back to the present moment on the count of three. Three, coming back to the present moment filled with confidence. Two, coming back to the present moment filled with faith. And one, coming back to the present moment happy, healthy, and whole. Happy, healthy, and whole. Take another deep breath. Exhale. And open your eyes. That's it, my friends. That's our show for today. Thank you very much for being here. The full interview is available at firstcontactradio.com. You can listen to the full hour and uh, 20 minutes that we spoke. You can also find the links to all the other stories at firstcontactradio.com. I'll be back tomorrow. Have an awesome day. Keep loving each other. I love you. Talk to you soon. Peace. I'm out of here.